so let's continue with the session today the last time we have started with hybridization and in that we have completed sp3 and the conclusion about three variations in sp3 is very very important to be always remembered pura pura yes sir summarize the three variations of sp3 yes what three examples i had given at the end of the last session you have not revised also pura rishi palse yes so the summary about sp3 hybridization so you had explained methane hmm so methane ammonia and water now you recollect you wanted a hint of what no so okay tell me what were the variations in regards to the shape of the molecule so i'm not sure Okay, Rishi, continue. So methane is tetrahedral. Okay. The ammonia is pyramidal. Hmm. And water is bent. And what is the reason in the shift of the shape from tetrahedral to pyramidal to bent? The lone pairs. How many in case of ammonia? How many lone pairs? So I don't remember. One, one lone pair. One. How can how can you don't remember ammonia? The central atom is nitrogen. How do you understand the number of lone pairs for any particular atom? What is the trick to get the lone pairs? Even if you forget, you should be able to identify it. valency minus number of bonded electrons correct nitrogen configuration is 2 5 how many electrons required to complete the octet 3 3 so 5 may say 3 will be bond pairs and two electrons would act as a lone pair lone pair so simply there will be one lone pair ye to organic se batate aa raha hu and oxygen ke liye out of the six electrons two, two get shared So the four unshared electron correspond to two lone pairs. Two lone pairs. So methane has a perfect or a regular geometry because of the absence of the lone pair. Ammonia has a distorted geometry or a pyramidal shape because there is LP BP repulsion which is greater than the BP BP repulsion. So the angle gets shrink. and if i talk about the angle the regular tetrahedral angle is 109.5 degree which decreases to how much 107 107 degree so now you can understand that the decrease is because of the lp in case of water there is lp lp repulsion which is much dominating over lp vp repulsion and that is dom dominating over bp vp repulsion so because of the two lps the angle shrinks further and it comes to about 104 degree 35 minutes correct just a simple summary is to be remembered okay yes sir now after sp3 hybridization we move to sp2 
when i discussed about organic compounds i just told to remember the hybridization for carbon carbon single bond in alkenes double bond in alkenes triple bond in alkynes and what was the hybridizations sp3 sp2 sp1 sp3 for alkene single bonded sp2 for alkene and sp for alkyne now can you realize why the hybridization is changing from sp3 to sp2 the number of p orbitals is decreasing by one the number of p orbitals are decreasing by one or can i say the number of hybrid orbitals is decreasing by one yes sir in sp3 there are four hybrid orbitals right yes sir sp2 mein teen hi hai aur sp mein do hi hai so the number of hybrid orbitals are decreasing by one when i go from sp3 to sp2 and sp2 to sp ab agar hybrid orbital kam ho rahe hai iska matlab there will be pure p orbitals available in case of kene and kyne yes and those pure or the unhybrid orbitals are actually responsible for hyper conjugation no hyper conjugation is something which is related to stability i'm talking about the shape the pure p orbitals or the unhybrid orbitals are responsible for what kind of bond formation pi pi so last time maine ek simple si cheez batayi thi aaj ye justify hogi that a sigma bond a sigma bond is always formed by overlap of hybrid orbital hybridized orbitals hybrid orbitals and a pi bond is always formed by overlap of pure orbitals pure orbitals pure orbitals it can be p or d s to non directional hai uske liye pi bond ka formation hoga hi nahi logical theek hai aur f ka hum discuss nahi karte hai so when i say a pi bond then i can always say that it is formed by overlap of pure p or d orbitals pure ki jagah i can also write unhybridized jo hybridization mein participate nahi karte hain is this part clear yes sir so once again a sigma bond is formed by overlap of hybrid orbitals hybrid orbitals orbital. orbital. and hybrid orbitals are those which are formed by mixing and recasting of the pure orbitals jab mix hote hain and when they redistribute their energies to give equal energy new orbitals they are called hybrid orbitals aur wo jab overlap hote hain they always form a sigma bond along the axis but jo unhybridized orbitals hote hain they always form the pi bond which is formed by lateral overlap ek aur cheez main add kar sakta hu yahan par this is axial overlap head on overlap bhi bol sakte hain and this is lateral overlap theek hai yes or no yes sir okay and the best example to depict sp2 example would be ethene that is c2h4 so if i just want to draw the structure with the bonds then in ethene there are two carbon atoms which are joined by double bond double, double bond and each carbon is joined to two hydrogens two hydrogens by single bond single, bond. single bonds that is how you will speak so when you see a double bond this is a combination of one s o pi sigma and one pi and the rest all the single bonds are always sigma sigma theek hai so now if i look at this carbon 
out of the tetravalency four bonds three are sigma and one is pi so if i want three sigma bonds i need to have three hybrid order atoms excellent if i want one pi bond i need to have one unhybrid orbital excellent so up we will write the ground state and the excited state and then the hybridized state jaisa humne last time sp3 ke liye kiya tha getting it yes, yes sir. sir so let's start with the ground state electronic configuration of carbon so carbon with six electrons has helium 2s2 and 2px1 2py1 and 2pz is vacant correct tell me why is the need for the excited state in case of carbon why there is a need the valency because in the ground state only two half filled orbitals are present by which there should be divalency for carbon but carbon observed kya hai tetravalency to usko justify karne ke liye excited state jo optional hota hai wo carbon ke liye karna padega right yes sir so one of the paired electron from 2s will jump into the vacant 2pz orbital and in the excited state it will be 2s1 2px1 2py1 and 2pz1 also the 2s and 2p have the difference in the energies that's why they are shown with different boxes different box different energy ab can you tell me what will happen in the hybridized state they all will have equal energy they all will have equal energy except one p orbital except one p orbital matlab mixing and recasting will happen for 1s and 2p 1s and 2p samjha once again i am repeating hybridization was the concept which was postulated on the basis of the observation matlab unko already pata tha ki ethene jo hai that is having a planar structure in which there are total of uh, five sigma bonds and one pi bond to usko justify karne ke liye hybridization mein kya bola gaya ki this three sigma bonds would be formed by hybrid orbitals and a pi which is a weaker bond would be formed by unhybridized orbital iska matlab the mixing and recasting will happen for only one s and two p तो अब जब मिक्स और रिकास्ट होकर आएंगे तो देर विल बी थ्री ऑफ द ऑर्बिटल विथ इक्वल एनर्जी एंड सेम शेप ऐसा नो यस एंड द टू पी विल हैव अ डिफरेंट एनर्जी एंड डिफरेंट शेप ठीक है अब ये जो इक्वल एनर्जी ऑर्बिटल्स है द नेम इज गिवन एस पर वॉट इज बिंग मिक्सड तो एस और दो पी मिक्स हुआ है तो क्या बोलोगे इसको sp2 so they are total of 3 sp2 what hybrid orbital and this i will call it as unhybridized orbital acha tell me what do not be... understand uh, is it called unhybridized orbital i do not understand जो मिक्स और रिकास्ट हो रहे हैं एंड द रिजल्टेंट ऑर्बिटल्स व्हिच आर फॉर्म दे आर कॉल्ड हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स तो यहां पर द मिक्सिंग एंड रिकास्टिंग इज हैपनिंग फॉर ओनली एस पी एक्स एंड पी वाई या इसीलिए दे आर हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स दिस पी जेड इज नॉट पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द मिक्सिंग ओके तो उसको ऑन हाइब्रिडाइज बोला अब फंडा क्या है द हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स फॉर्म सिग्मा and the unhybridized orbital form pi yeah but sir why do unhybridized orbitals form pi because a pi bond is formed by lateral overlap diagrammatically yeah. bataya tha ki nahi ha uh ha -huh. aur wo lateral overlap kab hoga only when the p orbital is having the pure shape of the dumbbell 
Okay. Because okay. the electron density for a formation of pi should be distributed equally along the axis. Upper or niche equal hona chahiye. Yeah. Hybridization mein kya hota hai? Orbital kuch aisa ho jata hai shape wise. Yeah. And electron density on one of the side becomes high yeah. and on the other side yeah. becomes low. इसीलिए तो एक्सटेंट ऑफ ओवरलैपिंग हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल में कैसा होता है ज़्यादा ज़्यादा होता है दैट्स व्हाई इट इज़ अ स्ट्रॉन्ग बॉन्ड ना या अगर इसमें भी वैसा ओवरलैपिंग होता तो ये भी स्ट्रॉन्ग बोलते हैं बट ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या है पाई तो वीक बॉन्ड है तो वीक बॉन्ड के लिए ओवरलैपिंग एक्सटेंट ऑफ ओवरलैपिंग शुड बी लेस एंड दैट इज है बताया एस पी टू का जो शेप होगा दैट विल बी मोर ऑफ रिजेम्बलेंस टू पी पी परसेंट ऑफ पी ज्यादा है ना और अनहाइब्रिड का जो शेप होगा दैट विल बी एक्सैक्टली द डंबेल ओनली यस नो सो नाउ व्हेन द थ्री एसपी टू हाइब्रिड ऑर्बिटल्स आर फॉर्म्ड विथ इक्वल एनर्जी एंड सेम शेप दे विल बी ट्राइंग टू ओरिएंट इन स्पेस और थ्री डायमेंशन सच दैट द रिपल्शन इज minimum and separation is maximum maximum to agar aapke paas teen lines hai to usko kis angle pe orient karoge 120 that is the reason it gets a planar geometry understood ab dekho isko diagrammatically kaise dikha raha hai so first you draw the axis Which is inclined at what angle? One twenty. One twenty. Okay. And we have two carbon atoms, so you have to draw the axis like this. Okay. Dono carbon ka sp two hai na? Yes or no? Yes sir. Yes sir. Okay. Now. For the sp two, the resemblance will be more like a p. So the orbital would be like this. One more time. And third one, right? And the fourth orbital will be unhybridized. that would be lying perpendicular to this plane and it will have a perfect dumbbell shape ab samajh mein aa raha hai this is sp2 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 and this is a pure p orbital getting it or not yes sir yes, ab jab dusra carbon samne aayega to ye head on overlapping karega Yeah. Then उसका second sp two और उसका third sp two. This head and head on overlapping forms the carbon to carbon sigma bond. Sigma hmm. bond. And इसका भी जो p orbital है that would be lying. Perpendicular to the plane. ठीक है? अब कम अलॉन्ग द एक्सिस एंड ओवरलैप टू दिस एस पी टू फॉर्मिंग द कार्बन टू हाइड्रोजन सिग्मा बॉन्ड तो फोर सी एच सिग्मा बॉन्ड सेटिस्फाइड वन टू थ्री फोर यस Yes, sir. And what about the pi bond? Later, Lola. These two orbitals are now parallel to each other. 
ठीक है अब ये तो काफी दूर दिख रहा है बट ऑब्वियसली इन रियालिटी दीज ऑर्बिटल्स वुड बी वेरी क्लोज ऐसो नो डायग्रामेटिकली ऑब्वियसली मैंने दूर बताया है बिकॉज आई नीडेड टू शो दैट ओवरलैपिंग ठीक है तो ये पैरेलली ओवरलैप करेंगे एंड दिस विल रिजल्ट इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कार्बन टू कार्बन पाई बॉन्ड एंड द इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी इज अब एंड बिलो द प्लेन लाइक दिस थ्री बॉन्ड ना दिस इज नॉट कंसिडर टू बी टू बॉन्ड्स पाई बॉन्ड वुड ऑलवेज है इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी Above the plane like this and below the plane Absolutely. like this. This is one pi bond. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, last thing. Which orbital was this? Kya naam tha iska? Sp two. And this? Sp two. So a carbon to carbon sigma is formed by dash overlap. क्या बोलोगे डैश डैश की जगह क्या बोलोगे अच्छा sp2 sp2 ठीक है दिस सिग्मा बॉन्ड इज फॉर्म बाय नाउ फिल इन द ब्लैंक्स व्हाट ओवरलैप s and sp2 s sp2 करेक्ट बिकॉज़ दिस इज द s ऑर्बिटल एंड द ग्रीन वन इज sp2 ये भी s sp2 होगा this would be sp2s and this would be sp2s understood yeah that's it this is the concept of sp2 hybridization so based on the planar geometry of ethene we are able to apply the concept of hybridization and justify the formation of sigma and pi bonds ठीक है यस सर नाउ लुक एट दिस डायग्राम दिस इज द एस ऑर्बिटल ऑफ कार्बन दिस इज पी जेड लिया है एंड पी एक्स लिया है सो बेसिकली द टू पी ऑर्बिटल्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन द मिक्सिंग एंड रिकास्टिंग so after the mixing of s and the 2p orbitals there are three orbitals which are generated which have same shape and same energy and these are the sp2 hybrid orbitals and they get oriented in the form of a planar geometry like this so this is the ऑर्बिटल इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी डायग्राम जहां पर यू कैन सी दिन ओवरलैपिंग ऑफ एस पी टू एस पी टू गिव कार्बन टू कार्बन सिग्मा बॉन्ड दिस इज ऑल्सो एक्शियल ओवरलैपिंग बिटवीन एस एंड एस पी टू एंड द पाई इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी लाइज अब एंड बिलो द प्लेन दिस इज अल पाई बॉन्ड सो वेन वी सी द इलेक्ट्रॉन डेंसिटी और द इलेक्ट्रॉन क्लाउड फॉर इथिन मॉलिक्यूल इट विल अपियर लाइक दिस समझा यस सर देन फॉर्मेशन ऑफ बोरॉन टाइ फ्लोराइड पी एफ थ्री नाउ इफ आई जस्ट ड्रॉ द स्ट्रक्चर फर्स्ट देन वॉट विल बी द नंबर ऑफ बॉन्ड्स बिटवीन बी एंड एफ थ्री 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 So it's simply boron at the central atom and the three fluorine atoms. Does it have any lone pair? No. 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 So, if lone pair is not there, it means perfect geometry. Hai. So let's start with the ground state configuration of boron five. So help me with the configuration quickly. helium 2s2 2p1 so can i write 2py 0 2pz 0 yes sir next is there a need for excited state yes 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 because it doesn't explain the valency 
डिफेंस एक्साइटेड स्टेट में बोरॉन का 2s इलेक्ट्रॉन जम्प्स फ्रॉम 2s टू 2p y y now in the hybridized state the mixing and recasting happens for 1s and 2p 1s and 2p so they will mix and recast to form 3 orbitals of equal energy and shape and they will be inclined in the form of a planar arrangement that's the reason i had drawn the bf3 molecule in the form of planar 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals and which orbital of fluorine will come and overlap along the axis p because it's 2pz1 orbital of fluorine which will be overlapping along the axis like this this is s plus py and pz theek hai wo by convention px py likh sakte hain but we can take any of the p orbitals then sp2 hybrids 120 degree planar and these are the fluorine orbitals which are overlapping along the axis to form the bf sigma bonds got it yes sir so fluorines will be unhybridized right yes the hybridization is only for the central atom so whenever we say methane undergoes sp3 hybridization it is actually carbon of methane undergoes hybridization the central atom both won't undergo hybridization it is only the central atom which forms the orbitals of equal energy and equal shape same shape clear yes sir then sp hybridization the example acetylene c2h2 that is acetylene so acetylene is an alkyne in which the carbon atoms are joined by triple bond and each carbon is joined to one hydrogen by a sigma bond theek hai ab if i talk about the type of bonds the triple bond is consisting of one sigma and two pi and the sigma single bonds are always sigma bonds ab focus on carbon so if you look at this carbon there are two sigma and two pi so now this two sigma bonds would be justified by Two orbitals, two two hybrid orbitals. orbitals, hybrid SP. orbitals, and the two pi bonds would be justified by pure orbital, two pure orbitals. So, four में से दो hybridize होंगे और दो नहीं होंगे. That's it. So, I'm directly writing the excited state of carbon. चलेगा ना? It will be two s one, two p x one, two p y one, and two p z one. So we know that in the excited state, the 2s and 2p definitely will differ in their energies, energies, energies as well as shape. But in the hybridized state, the s and the p orbital undergoes the mixing and recasting to form two orbitals which are of equal energy and shape, and they are different from the pure. 2p orbitals sab mein ek unpaired electron hai lekin iska jo shape aur energy rahega that will be different from the other two right yes sir simple hai sequence mein padhoge it's very very simple methane ke case mein all were mixing and recasting ethene mein only 3 and ethyne mein only 2 because as we move from single to double to triple the pi bonds are formed by the unhybridized orbitals 
इसलिए एक एक और बाइटल कम हो रहा है बराबर सो नाउ द टू एस पी हाइब्रिड और बाइटल्स वुड बी इंक्लाइंड एट एन एंगल ऑफ वन एटी एंड दैट्स वाई वी से इट हैज अनियर लीनियर ज्योमेट्री So now, when S and P are mixed, they are in equal proportion, but still size-wise, S versus P, which is larger? P. P. Of course, P. इसलिए S P का mix होने के बाद भी the orbital looks somewhat like P only. तो ये एक S P hybrid orbital है और ये दूसरा. These are the two S P hybrid orbitals. एंड बाकी जो अनहाइब्रिडाइज और वाइटल्स है दे विल बी वंस अगेन लाइंग परपेंडिकुलर एक यहां पर और एक यहां पर दिस इज लेट से वाई एंड दिस इज जेड अंडरस्टूड यस सर अब सामने से दूसरा कार्बन आएगा so the second carbon will have the head on overlapping between the sp hybrid orbitals so this will form sp sp overlap sigma bond between the carbon atoms theek okay? hai and once again the two unhybridized orbitals would be lying perpendicular like this ठीक है तो यहां से अलोंग द एक्सेस हाइड्रोजन आएगा एंड इट विल फॉर्म एस एस पी सिग्मा बॉन्ड यहां से अगेन हाइड्रोजन आएगा एस पी एस सिग्मा बॉन्ड तो तीन सिग्मा बॉन्ड जस्टिफाई हो गए यस यस एंड नाउ दीज और बाइटल्स द पी वाई एंड पी वाई विच आर पैरल this will form first pi bond this is just to indicate that they are overlapping parallelly ye ek pi bond ho gaya and this will overlap with the pz of the second carbon like this and that will form the second sigma bond sorry second pi bond sorry diagram clear yes yes sir. this is the diagram with the help of bonds this is the diagram with the help of orbitals if you just correlate they are exactly similar but here we are just showing the orbital orientation so finally ethyne undergoes sp hybridization rather the carbon of ethyne undergoes sp hybridization as a linear geometry and the bond angle is 180 degree so this is s and the px which will mix to form the two sp hybrid orbitals inclined at an angle of 180 degree and this is the electron cloud diagram is this understood yes sir so if you are asked to draw the diagram you can draw it with what i have discussed like this you can just draw this diagram for ethyne ठीक है यस सर ओके नाउ जस्ट शेयर द वीडियो व्हिच हैज दिस ऑर्बिटल रिलेशन एंड इट विल बी इजियर टू अगेन अंडरस्टैंड 
I'll just share it. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Just watch this. Is it audible? No, sir. No, oh. sir. Okay, no worries. Just watch it. This is ethane molecule. This is orbital diagram. This indicates the sigma bonds. Tetrahedron. Bond lengths are equal. These are only the hybrid orbitals of carbon. So here you see the sp3 hybrid orbitals of carbon. Now can you see the electron density? The electron is not fixed in the position. So it is moving along that orbital. And that is how we get the electron cloud or the electron density as per the quantum mechanics. Ground state configuration of carbon. Okay, does anyone know how to share the sound from uh, share screen? So you'll have to share computer audio. Share so there'll be, a, there'll be a task bar above over there. Configuration of... Audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. I'll just start again. The ethyne is a linear molecule with a bond angle classified as alkenes, alkenes, and alkynes. Consider ethene, ethene, and ethyne as their respective examples. The ethane molecule is ditetrahedral and has a bond angle of 109 degree 28 minutes. Ethene is a planar molecule with a bond angle of 120 degrees. While ethyne is a linear molecule with a bond angle of 180 degrees. All these three hydrocarbons differ from each other in geometry and bond angle due to a difference in the state of hybridization of carbon atom in them. In this topic, we will study the sp3 hybridization of carbon in alkanes and how it is responsible for its tetrahedral geometry. We will explain it by taking ethane again as an example. There are two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms joined by single bonds in this molecule. The orbital picture of ethane looks like this. We can thus visualize seven internuclear axes between them. A chemical bond formed by orbital overlap along the internuclear axis is a sigma bond. Thus, both the carbon atoms are surrounded by three carbon-hydrogen-sigma bonds and one carbon-carbon-sigma bond. These bonds are directed along the corners of a regular tetrahedron and all carbon-hydrogen bonds are of the same bond length. Let us now remove the six hydrogen atoms from this structure. Also, drag the two carbon atoms apart. 
we can clearly see four equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals around each carbon atom. Each of these orbitals has one lobe bigger than the other and is occupied by a single unpaired electron. Now, consider a carbon atom having atomic number 6 in the ground state. Its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz0. On excitation, an electron jumps from the 2s orbital to the 2pz orbital, resulting in an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. In order to form four sigma bonds with other atoms, the 2s, 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals of this atom intermix. This process of intermixing of atomic orbitals is called hybridization. As a result, four equivalent orbitals called sp3 hybrid orbitals directed along the four corners of a regular tetrahedron are formed. When two such sp3 hybridized carbon atoms approach each other along the internuclear axis and overlap, a carbon-carbon sigma bond is formed. This bond has a bond length of 1.54 angstrom. Six hydrogen atoms now approach and overlap the remaining six sp3 hybrid orbitals of both the carbon atoms, forming sigma bonds with bond length of 1.09 angstrom. In other words, whenever a carbon atom in an organic compound forms four sigma bonds which are directed along the corners of a regular tetrahedron, it is sp3 hybridized. Besides sp3 hybridization, the excited carbon atom may also undergo sp2 or sp hybridization. During the formation of a double bond, one 2s and two of the 2p orbitals hybridize. Consequently, this hybridization is termed as sp2 hybridization. The hybridization leads to the formation of three equienergic sp2 hybrid orbitals. As you can see, each sp2 hybrid orbital is bilobed, one lobe bigger than the other. The half-filled p orbital, which was not involved in hybridization, lies at right angles to the plane of the equilateral triangle. Now, let us understand how this hybridized state results in the formation of a double bond. For this, imagine a similar sp2 hybridized carbon atom approaching this carbon atom. As these atoms come closer, an orbital overlap takes place along the internuclear axis. This bond is called a sigma bond. At this stage, the unhybridized p orbitals which lie above and below the plane of the sigma bond also come very close to each other and overlap laterally, resulting in the formation of a pi bond between the two carbon atoms. Thus, there exists one sigma and one pi bond between the two carbon atoms. The other two valencies of each of the carbon atoms are satisfied by four 1s orbitals of hydrogen, hence forming an ethene molecule. Another process of intermixing, called sp hybridization, results in the formation of two sp hybrid orbitals. Now, this carbon atom is ready to combine with other atoms. Imagine another sp hybridized carbon atom approaching this carbon atom, such that the sp hybrid orbitals of the two carbon atoms face each other. These orbitals overlap along the internuclear axis, resulting in a sigma bond. Each of the carbon atoms also has two unhybridized p orbitals namely the PY and PZ orbitals. These orbitals, which lie above and below the plane of sigma bond, also come very close to each other and overlap laterally, resulting in the formation of two pi bonds between the two carbon atoms.
The fourth valency of each of the carbon atoms is satisfied by two 1s orbitals of hydrogen, which also make sigma bonds along the internuclear axis. The quest of the carbon atom is now complete and an acetylene molecule is formed. To summarize, we have studied that whenever a carbon atom in an organic compound forms four sigma bonds directed along the corners of a regular tetrahedron, it is sp3 hybridized. A carbon atom that forms three sigma and a pi bond is sp2 hybridized while the one in which it forms two sigma and two pi bonds is sp hybridized. Understood. Okay. So now the orbital picture is also clear with the video I've just shown. Any yes. doubts in any of the concepts till now? So do we have to know the drawings? Drawings, if asked, you have to draw in the manner which I have drawn. Like this. This diagram would be given in the digest. This is for SP. And this for SP2. This might be asked. So in SP2, where is the vacant P orbital? In sp2, this is the red one. So, but it's overlapping, no? There is no vacant orbital. It's the unhybridized orbital with one unpaired electron. No, so like when we did hyperconjugation, we studied that sp2 carbon has one vacant p orbital. That is for a carbocation, no? See, when we have a methyl chloride, and if I break this bond heterolytically, what will be the resultant species? CH3 plus and Cl minus. So there's a formation of a carbocation and a chloride anion. So this positive charge on the carbon indicates that it is electron. Deficient. Deficient. So the fourth valency of the carbon, the shared electrons are actually being pulled by the chlorine. So the fourth orbital, which had the shared electron, which is now being pulled by the chlorine, that orbital after the formation of carbocation will become vacant. Meaning now the carbon will have three of the orbitals, which are hybridized and they will be arranged in the form of a planar geometry and the orbital from which the electrons were being pulled by the chlorine that would become unhybridized and it will lie perpendicular to this plane. Matlab, initially in case of methyl chloride, if I ask you what is the hybridization of carbon, what will be your answer? sp3 it was sp3 only but now once the electrons are being pulled by the chlorine because of higher electronegativity what will happen the orbital where the electron was shared would become empty and the empty orbital will not be participating in the hybridization so finally this sp3 now changes to sp2 and it directs along the equilateral triangle Okay, so got it. And the fourth orbital now would be vacant, which will be perpendicular to this. See, this is your first sp2, second sp2, and third sp2. And the fourth orbital, which now become vacant, will be lying like this. 
समझा yes, so this is your CH3 and the positive charge indicates the presence of the empty or vacant p orbital this is how the orbital diagram in hyper conjugation was discussed got it yes sir any other doubt so when we uh, so when there are more than um, four bond pairs so when we take into consideration the angle we are taking like only adjacent carbon atoms kind of hmm so we take into consideration only the adjacent carbon atoms adjacent carbon atoms regarding what the angle it is always between the bonds yes uh, uh, the adjacent bonds hmm so so the angle we take only consideration between the adjacent bonds yes only between the adjacent bonds okay sir anything else yes okay now apart from sp3 sp2 and sp we have sp3d and sp3d2 also but in theory in the textbook it's not given but i would just like to discuss that concept also because that will make the understanding of d orbital also easier so i'll take the example of sp3d and under this hybridization the example is pcl5 phosphorus pentachloride so now you know the steps how to understand the hybridization theek hai to sabse pehle tell me the bond diagram how is the geometry of pcl5 oriented trigonal bipyramidal so phosphorus is at the center three of the chlorines would lie in the same plane and the two chlorines would be lying perpendicular like this now to justify this we start with the ground state configuration of phosphorus yes help me with this ne3s2 3p3 neon 3s2 3p Three would be three p x one y one z one. Next, will there be need for excited state? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why? Because it is pentavalent. Because in ground state, it is having only three half-filled orbitals, but the actual valence in PCl five is five. That is why now one of the three s orbital would become unpaired. sorry one of the electron from 3s would become unpaired and would jump into the 3d 3d vacant 3d orbital okay so now in the excited state we have phosphorus 15 represented as 3s1 3px1 3py1 3pz1 and 3d1 correct so in the excited state s p and d all will have different shape different energies but during hybridization there will be mixing of all all the five orbitals having one unpaired electron each and now there will be five equal energy same shape orbitals which will be called as s p 3 d five sp3 d hybrid orbitals and once again in the proportion p is higher in terms of percentage that is why the orbitals would have resemblance to the dumbbell kind of shape only theek hai 
So here orbital diagram is not that important because that would become complicated with five orbitals. So you can just draw this bond diagram. समझ में आ गया फ्लो यस ओके नाउ फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स इन केस ऑफ पीसीएल फाइव द बॉन्ड्स विच आर लाइंग इन द सेम प्लेन एंड द बॉन्ड्स विच आर लाइंग अब एंड बिलो विल दे बी इक्वल इन टर्म्स ऑफ लेंथ विल द थ्री बॉन्ड्स इन द प्लेन एंड द टू बॉन्ड्स अब बिलो B of equal length. Yes, sir. Okay. And were they differently named? So, yes, sir. Yes. Sir. What were the name given to the three bonds in the plane? Equatorial. Equatorial bonds. Equatorial, and the two bonds above below. Axial. Are axial bonds. Okay. Now. जनरली बॉन्ड लेंथ इक्वल कब होता है वेन ऑल द बॉन्ड्स आर ओरिएंटेड सिमेट्रिकली इन थ्री डी मतलब ऑल द बॉन्ड्स आर इक्वी डिस्टेंट फ्रॉम इच अदर देन ओनली दे विल बी ऑफ इक्वल लेंथ जैसे इन केस ऑफ मीथेन द फोर बॉन्ड्स ऑफ कार्बन व डिरेक्टेड अप अलॉन्ग द फोर कॉर्नर ऑफ टेट्राहेड्रन The angles between them were equal. इसलिए उन चारों bonds का length equal था. But if you look at this particular diagram, these three bonds are inclined at what angle? One twenty. One twenty. And these two bonds are ninety. Ninety degree perpendicular to the plane. मतलब इन तीनों bonds में जो repulsions होंगे Will they be equal for the axial bonds as well? No, sir. No. So, if your answer is no, will they be of equal bond length? No, no sir. sir. The answer is no. So, finally, conclusion: the axial and the equatorial bonds will be of different lengths. A question ये है कौन सा bond length higher होगा? Lesser repulsion. Lesser Sorry, more repulsion. More repulsion, greater bond length. Correct. So, if I talk about the CL PCL bonds in the same plane, are they suffering higher repulsion or lower repulsion? Lower. 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 So these will be of lesser or higher bond length. Lesser. 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 Matla equatorial bonds. the bonds which are lying in the same plane are shorter then axial bonds do you all agree yes and can i say it is due to lesser repulsion Yes. Yes, sir. Now, if the bond length is shorter, what can you comment on the bond strength? Will they be stronger or weaker bond? Stronger. Stronger, because jitta bond shorter rahega, energy required to break break the bond would also be higher. Sorry. Ha, ah, higher. That is why they would be. stronger bonds so basically whenever pcl5 ka reaction is considered then which bonds would be broken down easily axial axial the axial bonds because axial bonds would be longer and because of the longevity of the bonds they will be weaker isliye jab bhi pcl5 ka reaction dekhenge and when we talk about the bonds broken down then they are always the axial bonds which would be broken first is this clear yes chalo to abhi sp3 d2 ki baat karte hain 
can you tell me the example of this six bond pairs six sf6 sulfur hexafluoride and to draw the bond wala diagram the four bonds would be in the plane and two bonds would be above and below what is the geometry octahedral octahedral, octahedral. so with the octahedral to justify i'll start with the ground state configuration of sulfur 16 which is neon 3s2 3p4 so it will enter as 3px2 3py1 and 3pz1 right yes so so again is there a need for excitation yes of course because ground state mein only two half filled orbitals are there so how many excitations are required to justify the hexa valency two two so that will be first excited state from px ka electron jumping into the 3d and second excitation will be from the 3s jumping into 3d so i am finally writing the second excited state which will appear as sulfur 16 neon inert gas 3s1 3px1 3py1 3pz1 and 3d2 now to write 3d2 i need to enter the electrons into 2d orbitals so which d orbitals will be involved in the hybridization x y and y z no z square and x square minus y square yes dekho sp3 d mein agar main puchu this d orbital is which d orbital z z square and why so reason bataya tha na z axis is considered as the origin z axis is considered as a reference and d z square has the electron density on the z and also in the xy plane xy plane so sabse zyada electron density if i ask is present in which d orbital the answer is d z square d z square so in sp3 d the d orbital involved in hybridization is d z square because it is maximum electron dense so in d2 the d orbitals involved would be d z square and d x square minus y square clear hai and if i ask you about sp3 d3 which are the 3d orbitals involved बोलो कौन से तीन होंगे dz square dx square minus y square and dz y or zx okay that won't be the case now in case of 3d orbitals the maximum symmetry would be achieved when all the 3d orbitals are of similar orientations मतलब अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एक्स वाई वाई जेड एंड जेड एक्स वोट इट गिव मैक्सिम सिमेट्री टू द हाइब्रिडाइज और वाइटल्स सो वेन देर इज ओनली वन डी इनवॉल्व इट इज डी जेड स्क्वेर बिकॉज ऑफ मैक्स डेंसिटी वेन इट इज डी टू इट्स जेड स्क्वेर विथ एक्स स्क्वेर माइनस वाई स्क्वेर because that combination again would be of higher electron density but when there are 3d orbitals involved for
for the maximum symmetry and also the electron density, a combination of x, y, y, z, and z, x would be more favorable. Samjha? Yes, yes sir. वैसे भी क्वेश्चंस आते हैं कि ड्यूरिंग द हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑफ sp3 d2 द 2d ऑर्बिटल्स इन्वॉल्व्ड आर ठीक है तो अभी आई कैन स्पेसिफिकली राइट 3d z2 एंड 3d x2 y2 अदर्स बीइंग वैकेंट ओके यस सो एंड फाइनली ये सिक्स ऑर्बिटल्स मिक्स और रीकास्ट होकर Six sp3 d2 hybrid orbitals देंगे with equal energy and same shape and the single box will indicate they are equal energies. Am I clear on that? Yes, sir. ठीक है. So till this we have completed with the hybridization part, in which sp3, sp2, sp, sp3d, and sp3d2 is being discussed. D3 में भी a same आप process लेकर if7 को justify कर सकते हो. Iodine heptafluoride को. ठीक है? Okay, lastly, we have completed Vesper and hybridization both. Yes? Yes, sir. So, Vesper gives you the number of bond pairs and the lone pairs? Yes, sir. And that number of bond pairs and lone pairs are basically present in the form of hybrid orbitals when it comes to hybridization. Matla, from Vesper, once you get the number of BPs plus LPs, they are actually equal to the number of hybrid orbitals. And with that equivalency, I can say that the number of hybrid orbitals can directly give you the type of hybridization. Samjha ya trick? We have just connected the Vesper and the hybridization which we have completed. My example is how quickly you tell me the hybridization. Okay? Samaj ma jayega. SF4. Apply Vesper first. Tell me BPs, LPs and get the number. Four BPs and one LP. Four BP, one LP. Do I need to explain this? किसी को कोई doubt है इसमें BP LP में? Respond. Anyone having any doubt? No. ठीक है. So four BP, one LP. What number do you get? Five. Five. So with five hybrid orbital, can you tell me the hybridization? SP3D. So I will say SP3D with one LP. So is it going to be a perfect geometry or not? Not. It is not going to be a perfect geometry. So what is the shape? See, sir. That's it. So now, till the Vesper theory, we had talked about SF, SF4 having a seesaw shape. But now we have also got the hybridization that is SP3D. So we have BPLP ka jo number aata hai, usi ke basis pe we can directly get the hybridization type. Understood? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay, try so, this. But, hmm. say. So the one lone pair is not getting bonded. So why are we taking that as an orbital that is getting hybridized? See, the 
the lone pair is a part of the hybridized orbital only because it is confined to that particular central atom the lone pair is not with respect to the fluorine na it is confined to the central atom so even the lone pairs are involved in the hybridization only whenever there are pi bonds those orbitals doesn't get involved in the mixing and recasting baki whenever there are lone pairs they do involve get involved in the hybridization jaise ammonia mein out of the four orbital one of the hybrid orbital was having the lone pair and that is the reason this lone pair has the effect on the repulsion na that's why yes, the sir. geometry gets distorted and you get a different shape again this is as observed through the observe shape samjha yes sir okay can you help me with this how many bp is how many lp is 6 bp 1 lp 4 bp and 2 lp do alag answer mile 6 bp galat hai because oxygen and xenon would join by a coordinate bond double bond and that double bond would be considered as what in case of vesper super single super single super bond single bond so there will be two bonds associated with oxygen and two with fluorine so totally there will be four bps and how many electrons are gone 12 2lp 1lp dekho yahan par xenon is having eight electrons in the valence shell with highly electronegative elements like oxygen fluorine it can form bonds to so oxygen ke sath there will be double bond double bond and fluorine ke sath there would be single bond single bond to so ab 1 2 3 4 5 6 are gone to so aad mein se two would correspond to a single lone pair Once again, connecting Vesper with hybridization. Five hybrid orbitals will be sp three d with the lone pair, and once again, it will be a seesaw geometry only. Samja? Yes, sir. Yes. Next one, CLF three. Three B P two L P. Very easy. Is chlorine central atom? Is तो पहले सेंट्रल एटम पे फोकस फोकस ऑन सेंट्रल मतलब क्लोरीन देन टॉक अबाउट इट्स वैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन दैट इज सेवन सात में से गए तीन फॉर्मिंग थ्री बीपीज बचे चार दैट वुड बी टू एल पीज वंस अगेन फाइव हाइब्रिडाइजेशन रिमेन्स द सेम एस पी थ्री डी बट नाउ विथ टू लोन पेयर सो वॉट इज द शेप T shape. T shape. It is T shape. And what is the geometry? Trigonal bipyramidal. See, once again, I am telling you, if they ask you geometry, it is with respect to the regular arrangement. So, I will specifically write a distorted trigonal bipyramid. डायगोनल बाइपिरामिड अगर ऑप्शन में है तो भी चलेगा बट मोर स्पेसिफिकली इट इज डिस्टोर्टेड ट्राइगोनल बाइपिरामिड ज्योमेट्री एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द डिस्टोर्शन नाउ द शेप बिकम्स टी दैट इज हाउ यू स्पीक समझा जैसे अमोनिया का ज्योमेट्री इज टेट्राहेड्रल ओनली बट शेप इज पिरामिडल geometry tetrahedral distorted specifically and the shape is pyramidal samjha yes or no hello yes sir any doubt still here any part not understood
they at least respond yes or no hello yes sir yes sir okay 